Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be doing some basic integration. We'll be looking at the formula of integration. So we're going to look only at indefinite integrals. I will make another video for definite integrals. At the very end of this video, I'm also going to show you how to get the equation of a curve from the gradient function of the curve. Let's get by to it. Let's start with a generic example. So let's say we had ax to the power of n and we wanted to integrate this with respect to x. So when we integrate with respect to x, we apply the formula to the x variables. So we have x to the power of n. The first thing we need to do is the power of n, we need to plus 1. So after we've done that, so this will be equals to ax n plus 1. After we've added 1 to the power, the second thing we need to do is we need to divide by the new power, which is n plus 1. 1. Now, whenever we are dealing with indefinite integrals, we also have to add the constant of integration. So, we need to plus c. c is just a constant, it's just a number. So, this is how to use the integration formula for indefinite integrals. Now, let's get into some examples here. So, let's say we had integration of 15x squared with respect to x. dx is with respect to x. So, we apply the formula to x. So, now the power 2 plus 1, so 2 plus 1 will equal to 3. So this will be equal to 15x to the power of 3 divided by the new power, which is 3, plus c. We mustn't forget to plus c for indefinite integral. So we can simplify this, divide by 3, divide by 3, and this will be equal to 5x cubed plus c. This is the indefinite integral. Let's try another example. So let's say we only had a number. So when we only have a number, you must remember that there is still an x there. x to the power of 0. So this is actually equals to integration of 13 times x to the power of 0. Because x to the power of 0 is equals to 1. So x to the power of 0 dx. Once again, we just do the same thing. 0 here will be 0 plus 1. So this will be equals to 13x to the power of 1, which is just 13x over 1. Because the new power is 1 plus c. So this is simply equals to 13x plus c. Now this is a very useful tip here. Whenever you are integrating just a number with respect to a variable, all you have to do is add a multiple of the variable. So if we are integrating 13 with respect to x, then the answer will be 13x. And since this is indefinite integral, we need to plus c. That's all. All right, so let's go into a more complex example. Let's say we had this. Integration of 4u minus 15u squared. So now we have a function inside here, integrating a function of u with respect to u. So when it's with respect to u, du, we apply the formula to the u variable. So here we have u to the power of 1. Here we add 1. It's just the same thing. And then here we have u to the power of 2. So 2 will be plus 1 as well. So this will equal to 4 u square over 2 minus 15 u cubed over 3 plus c. Now we don't have to plus c twice because you have to understand what c is. c is just a number and we can simplify this to get divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 3 and divide by 3. So the 2u square minus 5u cubed plus c. This is the answer. Now let's move on to what if we have the power of the variable in the denominator. So what do we do here? When we have a denominator, you cannot apply the formula right away. The formula only applies to variables in the numerator. So how do we deal with this? All we have to do is use our law of indices and then we have to bring the variable from the denominator to the numerator. So what we do here is, this is actually integration of 4, 1 over x to the power of 3 is equals to x to the power of negative 3. So now we've moved the variable from the denominator to the numerator. And now we can use the same formula. 
dx. So let's just apply the formula. So this is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 will equal to negative 2. So this will become negative 2. So let's write that. This is equal to 4x to the power of negative 2 divided by the new power negative 2 plus c. So now we can simplify. Divide by 2, divide by 2. This will equal to negative 2x to the power of negative 2 plus c. Now this can be written as negative 2 over x square plus c. So this is how we deal with variables that are in the denominator. Simply bring it to the numerator using law of indices. Now what if we had a square root or a cube root? How would we do this? Now again all we have to do is write it as a power. So instead of using square root, we would write it as this is equals to integration of 7 v to the power of 1 over 2 because v to the power of 1 over 2 is square root of v with respect to v. When in, we are integrating with respect to v, then we must apply the formula to the v variable. So this is equals to, now let's add 1 to the power. So this will be 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 3 over 2. So we will get 7v to the power of 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus c. So now we just have to simplify this. When you divide by a fraction, it is equal to multiplying the reciprocal of the fraction. So this will be times 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 times 7v to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. And this will simply give us 14 over 3 v to the power of 3 over 2 plus c. It's as simple as that. Now we've done various examples here. What if we have something like this? How do we deal with this? Now if you're familiar with the differentiation, I have a video on differentiation. If you want to learn about differentiation, uh, please check out the link in the description below. But this is the same principle as in differentiation. Whenever we have a function like this, what we want to do is we want to separate the terms. We want individual terms so that we can apply the formula to individual terms. We don't want them combined like this in a fraction. So what we do is we split into two fractions. This single fraction, we split it into two fractions. So we start by doing that. This will equals to integration of, let's use a bracket now, 8t over t cube. So we are splitting the fraction. 8t over t cube minus 24t cube over t cube with respect to t. So this is what we are doing now. We have split the fraction so that now we have two individual terms. Now let's simplify this first. So this will be, this will become t square and this t cube will be eliminated. So this is actually equals to integration. We haven't integrated yet, so we must always maintain the integration sign. So this is equals to integration of 8 over t square minus 24 with respect to t. So here again, similar to earlier, we have the term in the denominator. So we need to bring it to the numerator using the law of indices. So this will be equals to integration of 8 t to the power of negative 2 minus 24 with respect to t. Now we can integrate. So as usual, minus 2 plus 1, this is equals to minus 1. So this will be equals to 8 t to the power of negative 1 divided by negative 1. Don't forget to divide by the new power. Minus 24. 24 is just a number. So when we integrate with respect to t, you should get 24 t. And don't forget the constant of integration plus c. Every time you finish integrating, you must add the constant of integration. So this will be equals to negative 8 over t minus 24 t plus c. So this is how we do integration when you have a combined fraction. Just split it up into individual fractions. So now we have individual terms to apply the formula. Now let's go to how to find the equation of a curve. 
when you are given the gradient function. Let's look at this. So look at this example. Find the equation of the curve. We want to look for the equation of the curve with this gradient function, dy dx. So you are given dy dx, you are supposed to find y. Now let's look at the relationship between these two first. How did we get dy dx in the first place? We started with y. How do we get to dy dx? This is done by differentiation. So you are differentiating with respect to x to get dy dx. Now, integration is simply the reverse of differentiation. So when we want to go from dy dx back to y, all we have to do is integrate with respect to x. Because this is the opposite of the differentiation. So when we differentiate with respect to x to get to dy dx, from dy dx, when you want to go back to y, you have to integrate with respect to x as well. So let's apply this principle here. We have dy dx, we want to go to y, so we have to integrate with respect to x. So we can start by saying that y will be equals to the integration of dy dx with respect to x. And this is equals to integration of 2x plus 7 with respect to x. So this is y is equals to, so here we have x to the power of 1. So 1 plus 1 will be 2. So this will become 2x squared over 2 plus 7 is just a number and we are integrating with respect to x. So plus 7x and of course we have the constant of integration plus c. So simplify this, you will get y is equals to x squared plus 7x plus c. So now, we almost have the equation. We still have an unknown. C is an unknown here. We don't want the unknown. The variables are variables, but c is a constant. We cannot leave the constant as an unknown. We need to find the value of this constant. How do we do that? Let's look at the rest of the question. Given that the curve passes through the point 1, 11, what does this mean? This gives us the value of y and the corresponding value of x. So 1, 11 means when x is 1, x is equals to 1, y is 11. This is what it means. So let's just substitute these values into the equation of the curve because the point lies on the curve. So we can substitute these points into the equation of the curve. So you will get 11 is equals to 1 square plus 7 times 1 plus c. So we get 11 is equals to 8 plus c. So we want to find c minus 8, minus 8 on both sides. You will get c is equals to 3. Now that we have the value of c, we can substitute back into the equation of the curve. So therefore, you will get your full equation is y is equal to, complete equation is y is equal to x squared plus 7x plus 3. So this is how we find the equation of the curve when we're given the gradient function. Let's try another example here. This is the same concept but asked in a different way. So given that ds dt, so we have a derivative of s here with respect to t, ds dt equals to 15t squared plus 8. Find the equation of s. So notice here they've also given us a pair of values. When s is 49, t is 2. So what do we do here? We are given ds dt, we need to find s. So we apply the same concept here. When we start from s and we go to ds dt, what we are doing is we are differentiating with respect to t. s to ds dt is differentiation with respect to t. So the reverse of this process is simply integration with respect to t. So we have to do the same thing here. When we want s, all we have to do is integrate ds dt with respect to t. So this will be s is equals to integration of ds dt with respect to t. And this is equals to integration of 15 t squared plus 8 with respect to t. 
So again, all we have to do is apply the formula here. So this is 2, so this will be 2 plus 1, which is 3. This we get S is equals to 15 T cube over 3, the new power, plus 8 is just a number. So when we integrate with respect to T, we will get 8 T. Don't forget constant of integration plus C. Let's simplify this first. So you get 1 divided by 3, 5. We will get S is equals to 5 T cube plus 8 T plus C. Once again, we cannot leave C as an unknown. We need to find the value of C. How to find the value of C? We already given one set of data here. S is 49 when T is 2. So therefore, T is equals to 2 when S is equals to 49. We substitute that into this equation. We will get 49 equals to 5, 2 cube plus 8 times 2 plus C. Now, when we work this out, just use your calculator, you will get 49 is equal to 56 plus C. So now we minus 56, we want to get rid of 56, so minus 56 on both sides, you will get C is equal to negative 7. Now that we have the value of C, all we have to do is substitute into our equation for S to get the complete equation. Therefore, S is equal to 5T cubed plus 8T minus 7. So this is how we go from the first derivative back to the equation of the variable itself. If you've learned something from this video guys, please, please do help me by hitting that like button because it really does tell YouTube that this is a good video and it will help with the growth of my channel. Thank you very much for doing that. And if you enjoy a video like this, please do subscribe. I will produce at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.